Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's look at how cross dissolves affect your video. Okay, cross dissolve or a fade or a cross fade or a film dissolve, all of those things are doing the same thing. They're taking one clip and fading it into another clip or fading in or out from black or white. The speed of that duration, I think, is really important. I'm going to show you some examples. Uh, because when I see new users use dissolves, they almost always have too long of a dissolve. Uh, either they're just using the default and not making a change, or they're actually extending it. I'll show you how it affects the pace. I'll also show you an example of how film dissolve is different from cross dissolve in uh, the, the amount of color that it has. Let's have a look. Okay, so here is a cut. That's a straight cut, no dissolve. We want to put a dissolve between these two cuts. And you'll notice that there's no white triangles. Now I have a whole tutorial about the white triangles and how that affects your transitions. White triangles show you that you're at the end of a video, which you can still add a dissolve to the end of the video, but instead of the, tr the dissolve showing a moving picture, it's going to show a stop picture, a static and it extends the frame. So these have all been trimmed, um, which makes sense. Okay, so you can uh, go to the effects and go down to video transitions and open up dissolve and you'll see cross dissolve has a blue highlight. If you right click, you can see I can set that as a default transition. So cross dissolve is set as the default transition. You can set anything as a default transition. And there's also a default duration. In the edit menu, preferences, edit menu on Windows, Premiere Pro menu on Mac, preferences, timeline. You'll see up at the top, video transition default duration is one second. So let's leave it at that. So. We know that we have a default transition. We know that it's one second. Control D on Windows, Command D on Mac sets a default transition to that edit point. So we'll move to that edit point and then we'll tap that key. Control D, Command D. Now we have a transition. So now let's look at this cut. And there's a certain speed to that cut. There's a certain feeling we get when we see a dissolve happen. Do you want to, to me, it's the, the, the criteria is, do you want to recognize the dissolve or do you want to not recognize the dissolve? I'll show you an example where we stop recognizing the clips and start recognizing the dissolves, which can be very, very uh, disconcerting to the viewer. So that is one speed. You don't have to go all the way into the preferences to change this speed. There are two ways to do this. One way is to double click on it and change the number. I'll show you that double click, and I can change the number. So this is hours, minutes, seconds, frames. So you can see it was set to one second. So if we want to cut that in half, you'll cut the frames in half. And I happen to be at 30 frames a second. So I'll just type in one five. Anytime you're entering a time code in Premiere Pro, you always start at the lowest number. So I don't have to type zero colon zero zero colon zero zero colon one five. I just type one five. Now watch this down here will change to half the speed. And now I can try this at half the duration, twice the speed. Okay. So that has a certain kind of look to it. Another way you can change these is by grabbing the edges. And you'll see when I move my mouse, it changes to that. If you're zoomed out too far, then sometimes you can't get that and you need to zoom in. I'm also holding the Option key on Mac, the Alt key on Windows, and using my scroll bar here. And you can see I can change the duration here. Now, by default, the duration changes symmetrically. Uh, but if you hold down the, the Shift key on uh, Mac or Windows, you'll change one side. So you can do this asymmetrically. Okay, so let's go back to um, one second. Okay, 
So that is adding a simple dissolve. Now I wanted to show you the difference between a film dissolve. So here's the film dissolve and here is the cross dissolve. It's kind of hard to see the difference. So what I did is, okay, so here I've got the film dissolve above and below I have the other dissolve. I also added a crop to this just so I could move this back and forth. So you're seeing that's the film dissolve and that's the cross dissolve. You see the film dissolve holds much more of the, the light, the highlights. But I like the cross dissolve. Look at his ear. Look at the face of the, of the uh, statue. You can see more of it. So there's no right or wrong. It's just some people might prefer film dissolved, cross dissolve. I like cross dissolve. Okay, so now let's look at what I like to, to uh, call fixing jump cuts. And jump cuts are all the rage on YouTube, not because they're so artistically perfect and people love to express themselves. It's just they're too lazy to do a better performance. So they say things and then they cut things and then they cut things. Sometimes they're cutting one word at a time. Drives me insane. So let's look at an interview here where we need to cut out some dead air. Okay, so I'm going to cut there, in point there. There's a bunch of dead air in here. Out point, cut that in. Now we've got a jump cut. Particularly with fly rock. In my 60 years experience. So if I put a cross dissolve in here, we'll soften that. Particularly with fly rock. In my 60 years experience. So it just helps instead of a, a total jump cut. Now I will admit that if I'm doing this to an interview, I actually prefer a dip to black. Let me just show you that. So I'll leave the cross dissolve in there. I'll go back over to my effects and type in dip. There's dip to white and dip to black and drag that over that. Now I'm doing a dip to black. Particularly with fly rock. In my 60 years experience, to me, that just softens it a little bit more than it than a direct jump cut. Okay, now let's look at the duration of a dissolve. Here we've got, I've just created an imaginary end of a movie where we've got a happy ending and we're going to dissolve into the credits. So right now I don't have a dissolve. So let's put a dissolve on the end here. That's okay, but watch what happens when I extend the cross dissolve a long, long time. So I'll grab this, extend it all the way to here. Now let's watch this. I like that because, first of all, you don't see the dissolve. You don't recognize it. You're just watching the two of them talking. And as they start to fade, you realize, you should realize, at least I realize, their story will continue and they will go on. And we don't have to see that. The dissolve slowly says they're going to go off into the sunset and have a beautiful life. They broke up, by the way. But anyway, so that's soft dissolve. Okay. Okay. Now, the last example I want to show you is a whole group of cuts. And these are all hard cuts. I'm going to show you three examples. I'm going to show you all the hard cuts with music. And by the way, all of this music is by Artlist. I love Artlist. There's a link in the description. Amazing stuff. So watch this three times. Stick with it. It makes sense. First time, you'll see all the clips and you'll hear the music. The next time I'm going to do the default transition at one second, and then I'll do a default transition at two seconds and you'll see the result.
This is all shot in Quebec City, by the way. If you've never been to Quebec City, Canada, oh my God, you have to go. So beautiful. Okay, let's throw one second cross dissolve on all of these. So I'll select all the clips, Control D or Command D. Let's listen to the, let's watch the same thing with uh, one second cross dissolve. All right, let's go back to the preferences. Timeline. Change this to two seconds. And now apply the same default transition. You're looking at the same clips, the same music, the same pace, but now with a two second uh, cross dissolve. So what do you think? I hate it. I actually thought before I tried this, my, my original thought was the music is very long and flowing. The shots are all slowly panning and, and moving in. And there's a dreamy quality to this. Why wouldn't it look better with longer cross dissolves? To me, I remember I said before, am I looking at the cross dissolve or not? With two seconds, now I'm starting to look at the cross dissolves. I'm not looking at the content. And I think that has to do with the fact that the clips themselves are a short duration. So a longer dissolve doesn't allow your mind to settle on what you're looking at for that clip, that clip, clip. Instead, it's, what am I looking at? Oh, I'm fading on. What am I looking at? So the two second didn't work. The one second, way better. The straight cuts are nowhere near as beautiful as, as the uh, one second cross dissolve. The one second cross dissolve just flows beautifully. I think it ties the whole scene together. Uh, but I would advise you to use your cross dissolves uh, carefully. Use them where you need to use them. And I, I know people love using transitions. It's like the days of, of desktop publishing where somebody had 30 fonts and they created a newsletter and they used 30 fonts. Don't use 30 transitions. Don't use all that stuff. Please, for the love of everything holy, take it easy on, on transitions. Use cross dissolve. Um, as I showed you, it, it can really make a, a scene uh, flow better. Um, faster cross dissolves. To me, technically, I can soften the cuts uh, that are too abrupt with a little bit of a cross dissolve. Uh, so those are my thoughts on cross dissolve. Uh, a little bit on the film dissolve if you, if you like that one too, but uh, hopefully you found this informative. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed, why don't you take a moment and subscribe? We've got new tutorials all the time. You want to support us a little more, you can do that through PayPal. There's a link in this description of this video and on the front of the channel. We love all of our wonderful PayPal supporters. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to look into all the niggly bits and find out all the little things that you can do to your video to make it a lot better.